What's up, family? It is a huge Monday show. Why? Because maybe the biggest women's sports spectacle that you will see in the 2024 year is about three hours away. I'm talking LSU. I'm talking Caitlin Clark. The last time we saw these two match up, these two teams and this individual, 9.9 million people watched. One of the 100 most watched sporting events of last year, and we get to see it today. Well, staying in basketball, LeBron James, we've been watching him his whole career. 40 points he had yesterday. Nine for 10 from the three point line 13 to 17 from the field scoring more points than he has lived years on this earth absolutely mind-blowing and then let's transition to the gridiron because the dallas cowboys they talk in reunion zekio elliott he was a glaring omission from the team's roster last year but should he return well speaking of returning and speaking of dallas and speaking of the cowboys dave hellman is on the show what up dave i think they call that like synergy yeah <laughs> good to see y'all you look good big dog that looks like some johnny bravo here but i'm a fan of it it's getting a little long i am a fan of it it has been far too long joy taylor how are we i'm great back from iceland I'm chilling when pun intended Yes, chill. <laughs> oh, studio, so good now. Back in my element. Good to be back. It's good to see you, Eagles all-time rushing leader. My guy, two five, two live. Right, Lashawn, Shady what's up, McCoy. What's up, my guy, hey, how you doing? Today? How are you? Hey, Joy. <laughs> hey, girl. How you doing? Good. What's up, Dave? <laughs> Y'all are in for the day, the show, the next 90 minutes of your life. Dave, it's an honor to have you here as we get to the very first topic, maybe the most important NFL topic as it pertains to the NFL's team. Mm. Dak Prescott, you all have heard all of the talk, all of the conversation, but let's let you into the nitty gritty. Some of the details you have yet to hear on national television. Remember, the Cowboys cannot franchise tag Dak Prescott, and they are allowing him to play into the final year of his deal. Bring us on camera. Let me break down the math. So the Cowboys could have given Dak another deal, Dave Hellman. You know this better than anybody. They've chosen not to, at least not yet, mm. which means Dak Prescott, Shady, is going to play the last year of his deal. This is completely unheard of. You don't let franchise quarterbacks. You don't let all pro quarterbacks. You don't let the face of your organization go into the last year of his deal because he might wise up and say, you know what? Don't sign me. I want to hit free agency. Shady, you've seen Big time paper in your career, and you've seen big time performances. Will this be Dak Prescott's last season in Dallas? <sighs> Tell me what you think, man. Come on. It might be. It all depends on Dak Prescott, right? I was saying this all along. Why would you want to pay this quarterback when you know what he's going to do in the postseason? The regular season? Yeah, sign him up. <laughs> postseason, you don't know what he's going to get. Is it going to be the, the all pro or is it going to be the regular deck that we see every post? Don't give me a mic. No, no, no. But, but, no, no will I'm, it I'm going to give it to you. Hold on. Let me, I'm working to it. Let me land. <laughs> let me land. My thing is, I, I'm going to say, um, no. Oh, wow. Psych! <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is, it's over. It's over. Because you know why? Because Dak is going to be Dak. He's going to have a good season, right? Postseason, he's going to lose. That's what he does. If he can take this team to the NFC Championship game, then we could be talking about extension. Sure. But he's not going to give you that. And there's no reason why I would be paying a quarterback all this money to give me the same results. You can go out there and get your young quarterback to take you through the regular season and get to the postseason and don't win. And you got all these other players to pay. Mm -hmm. When you talk about a Michael Parsons, you talk about CeeDee Lamb, talk yeah. about Zach Martin. These guys want their money, and they deserve it. That Prescott, I mean, have a good year here or there, but not to stay. So, yes, I'm going – Opposite. I don't think Ooh. he would be. And I will say this. When Dak Prescott leaves the Cowboys, we will not be talking about him every other week. Do you yeah. know why? He'd be like every other quarterback. That's just, that's just good. Good. Right? When you play with the star, they make you bigger than what you really are. And we'll see that coming real, real soon. And what'd you say when you, when you do what? When you play for the star, they make people look better than what they really are. Mm. That's, that's a bar. Ooh. That's a bar. I see you've been here for a year and a half, and you, you know just this? now dropping it, that. Hit. It might be the LSU game. What's up, Johns? What's that first name? Flo Shay. Ooh, it's Flo Shay, Flo Shady. I don't know. It's something. To it. <laughs> it's something Shady to it. is in rare form, America. I will not apologize. I will just say congratulations. You are seeing rare form, Shady. Joy Taylor. Will the operative word there is will this be mm -hmm. Dak Prescott's last season in Dallas? I think so. Now I do think it depends on how the season ends, but it's almost scientific. Mm -hmm. Cowboys at this point. We know what the cycle is. We know what they have. I don't know how they could have possibly been better than they were last year. Very I don't true. know how they could have been better than they were at home last year. Mm -hmm. None of it mattered. It still ended up the exact same way. Mm -hmm. He's going to be great during the regular season. He's going to put up incredible numbers. They're going to win the division or be competing for the division. They're going to be in the postseason, and then they're going to disappoint. Yeah. It happens every single year. Sounds about right. So if that changes, then I think 
my answer will change. Mm-hmm. Because if you can get, if Dak Prescott can get the Cowboys over that hump, which really means just getting to the NFC Championship game. I'm not even talking about the Super Bowl because there's no need for us to associate the Super nope. Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys nope. at this point. So get to the NFC Championship game. If he can do that, not only do I think he should stay, regardless of what the market is, because nothing is going to be better than him winning like that in Dallas, but I think that Dallas should obviously keep him because yeah. then he would have done more. But at this point, while I think Dak Prescott is better than a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL, when you're talking about those numbers and all the guys that Shady just mentioned you have to pay – what are you actually paying for? Regular season performances? There's cheaper quarterbacks than that. And at this point, you keep saying you want to get over the hump. I think there's something to being close to. Just keep, you know, you're there every single year and eventually you break through. And then there's a very fine line between that and doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And to me, I think that's what the Cowboys are because the team, I don't know how you could have been better than you were last year. Dak Prescott couldn't have been better than he was last year. He was an all pro for the first time in his career. He had the best season of his career. And what happened, Mm. Dave? They lost in the playoffs. When? First round. Against who? The youngest team the in the end. You, you, you could just ask, like, what always happens, Dave? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is, like, it, is it my turn? <laughs> let me, let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because okay. I will say that we hear a lot of Cowboys conversations on national television, but whenever there's a Cowboys conversation, I truly believe there's no better voice to hear from than the one to my left, Dave Hellman. Dave, you and I were working in Dallas at the Star when yeah. Dak Prescott was drafted. You worked for the Cowboys before the Star existed, going back to Valley Ranch. Oh, the you worked building for- itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I was right. like, not the no, 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 before, the, before yeah. the building existed. So of all the voices you all ever hear, listen to radio, television, podcasts, etc., about the Cowboys, the voice that you are about to hear is probably the most credible as it pertains to really knowing the inside scoop. So, Dave, let me ask you this. Will it be Dak Prescott's last season in Dallas? No, it won't be Dak's last season. And, and look, actually, here, here's the difference. So y'all were gracious enough to bring me on here in 2022, and we've been having this dance ever since, right? And I'll actually, I'll meet you, Shady, and you, Joy, halfway, and even say a lot of the stuff that y'all just said is true, and it's fair. But I do think y'all are... Well, thank you. Y'all are more worried about how things should be Ooh. and not how they will be, we'll not there. how the business of the NFL works. Real quick, answer me quickly. Has Kirk Cousins accomplished more in his career than Dak Prescott? No, sir. No. no. You could say it's equal. He hasn't done more. That's correct. What just happened to him? He tore his Achilles five years older than Dak Prescott and signed a major, major extension because that is the value of quality quarterback play in the NFL, regardless of what happens once the postseason starts. If you're capable of being a franchise guy and leading a team, two playoff caliber records on a regular basis, you get paid. Dak Prescott will get paid by somebody next year. It almost doesn't matter how he plays. Almost. He does need to play well, preferably stay healthy. But as long as he does what he's done his entire career, Mm -hmm. never had a losing record, by the way, in his entire NFL career, Mm -hmm. he's going to be in line for a major contract. But where? Thank in you. that's the Thank question. You. Where? You didn't say it. You <laughs> the didn't answer. Say it. You said no, somewhere. The answer is in Dallas, and here's why. And here's, I've had a lot of time to think about this because honestly, this is the closest to a crisis of faith as I've ever had. Because look, that <laughs> I told y'all this last time I was on. That Green Bay game stunk, <laughs> and Dak was part of it. The defense was as well, but Dak played poorly in that game. The reason I think he stays in Dallas, and this is what I've had a lot of time to think about. I think the Cowboys will cave. I think the Cowboys will at some point recognize, oh, it's scary out there in no quarterback land. What did Arthur Blank just do? He Mm -hmm. suffered through three years of miserable quarterback play after Matt Ryan left and paid Kirk Cousins, who hasn't accomplished as much as Dak Prescott. What might the Patriots do at the top of this draft? Draft a quarterback because Robert Kraft is sick of having not Tom Brady. It sucks to not have a quarterback. The Cowboys know that at the end of the day. And we have a track record that suggests that they do this. They talked tough about Zeke Elliott. He skipped out on training camp. What happened? They gave him the biggest running back contract in the NFL. They talked tough about Demarcus Lawrence, their star edge rusher. What happened? They eventually caved and gave him a huge defensive end contract. When a guy is worth paying, they usually pony up eventually, and it won't be any So you tell me what they do do, but tell me what they should do. Because I don't think they should 
signed Dak to a long-term deal. Because we all know the Cowboys more than likely aren't going to win a Super Bowl this year. It's unfortunate. I was born in Dallas, and I was born on the precipice of them winning three Super Bowls in that four- or five-year run. So, Dave, Joy, Shady, what should the Cowboys do? I think this should be Dak's last season in Dallas. Unfortunately for the Cowboys, you're stuck in that quarterback purgatory period where Dak is so good that you don't get a great draft pick, but he's not good enough to win you anything substantial. So, Shady, let me start with you. What should should the Cowboys do? Should this be Dak's last They're season? doing the right thing right now. This is a stepping start, right? Starting in the right direction. Hey, we wanted to pay him. You know what? Let's take a, a break on that. It was all this conversation about it. Are they going to pay Dak? No. Why are we paying him? Yes, he's a good player. Yes, it took him eight years to get one all-pro. Yes, we get that. But what have you done for us? It's a couple of regular season wins? They won more than that. It's the Dallas Cowboys. It's not Atlanta, Falcons, right? It's the Patriots. It's not the Patriots without Tom Brady. It's the Dallas Cowboys, the biggest brand in football. Patriots biggest brand in sports. The Cowboys. What I'm saying is, though, after Tom, then what? Who are we? Right? Because that, no matter, I don't care who the, the, uh, the quarterback is for the Cowboys, it's always going to be a big brand. Tom, um, Tony Romo was big time, right? Mm-hmm. Big time. He leaves. Now, that Prescott comes in there, fourth round, fifth round pick, wherever he was. He's big time now. Yep. So what I'm saying is, his time has, it's over. Unless he go out there and, and takes an NFC Championship game, why are we paying this guy? We don't want to be the Falcons, Dave Hellman. We don't want to be them. So to answer your question, and another thing, I, I got to do this. For Go ahead, second. do what you got to do. You brought up Zeke Elliott, right? First of all, they had to pay Zeke. They didn't have to. I mean, they do. They and absolutely it, did not have to. Your best player, your, your, your best players that's young that you draft, if they ball out, and their second contract should be the easiest to get. That typically happens, right? He went for it two years early, though. That was the thing. However, however you want to cut it, however you want to cut the slices up, if you are a hell of a player and you get drafted to his team and you ball out, your second contract should be the easiest one to get. And that's what he got. Mm-hmm. Demarcus Lawrence, hell of a player on defense. But we're talking about the quarterback who makes majority of the money on the team. So if you want to have nine all pros like you had this year, you want to have these type of good players, you need to have your quarterback balling at a nice number. Because if not, we know that Prescott can't win games without having them superstars with him. Because he can't win with them. Should. Should, Joy. Should. I'm torn because Dave's not lying. They do be caving. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know, every year, Jerry gets a little more... He's tired, he's tired of it, Joey. He's tired of it. You know, there's, he's tired there's, of there's it. conversations about having a quarterback battle with him and... The winner, Cooper Rush? Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush. The, no, the winner, Cooper Rush. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, and, and we've seen stranger things happen. Aaron Rodgers is playing for a different team now. Russell Wilson is playing for a different team now. Tom Brady left and played for a different team. I'm obviously not putting these guys in the same category, but franchise guys leave Matthew for other Stafford. teams. It it happens. It, Matthew Stafford. It, it, it does happen. So it's not unthinkable that he would end up leaving the Cowboys. I think it really just matters how the season ends. Because while I agree with you, not having a quarterback, being in no man's land, with not having a quarterback is a nightmare scenario to be in. But we've seen so much movement with that position over the past couple years. You don't know who's going to be available. We didn't know that uh, Russell Wilson has been Pittsburgh right now. That's true. He was in Seattle. He was in Denver. He's now in Pittsburgh. Then I'm not saying that Russell Wilson is going to play at the same level that Dak Prescott played last year, but certainly Russell Wilson is more accomplished than Dak Prescott. Yes. There are guys who will be on the market next year that we aren't thinking or have any idea are going to be available Right now, whether that's what the Cowboys will end up doing or not, I do think that if they do decide, if they have the same exact ending that they've had and they decide to stick with Dak Prescott again, I think that's fine. I think Kirk Cousins is always a very good comparable. It gets better and better every year, sure, that comparison. Uh, but the, money, the money is fine. I'm just not talking about you as a Super Bowl team. Like, at one point, it has to stop. It has to stop. We don't talk about the Falcons like they are Super Bowl contenders. We Never. think they're a better team. We think yeah. they are actively trying to improve. We think they have a lot of young pieces. They hired a new coach. They went out and got Kirk Cousins. They're making positive moves. But none of us are going to pick them to get to or win the Super Bowl this year. Maybe they will. And that would be incredible. But nobody's doing that right now. But we will, in a few months, sit up here and talk about the Cowboys as being Super Bowl contenders. And at, my, at, at this point, it's madness. But we know the answer and, to and, that. And we know why we do that. You didn't get yes, 60 yes, a year, though. That's, that's the point, though. Like, if you are actually – the reason we're not talking about them as Super Bowl contenders is because we don't think that Kirk Cousins is capable of doing that because we've not seen him have the capacity to do that, even if he is a good quarterback. So why do we do that with the Cowboys? It's because they're so talented. Everywhere else. And then this year, when he had the best year of his career, the exact same thing happened. And they've done less to make the team around him good this year. I mean, that, that we have to oh acknowledge God. that. We, 
That, I, mean, I don't, I don't, know, I don't, I don't know how you argue that. You may, but I'm saying I don't know how you, you argue that. Need, They're do down you, like three Pro Bowlers from last year. Is, that, hey, I mean, let me, let me ask you a nuanced question before I go to break. This is a question you probably don't hear often on television because this has to do with being inside the Cowboys facility, which you and I both were. Me for two years, you for roughly 10 plus. I would say the Cowboys, five, the five most beloved Cowboys, 2023. I would say Zach Martin. I would say Dak Prescott. I would say uh, Micah Parsons. I would say Demarcus Lawrence. I would say Tyron Smith, Ooh, historically. C.D. Lamb? C.D.? No, I'm talking historically. I'm okay. talking like, I'm not talking like okay. best. I'm talking okay. like, remember how we thought people thought DeMarco Murray was loved? And I was like, no, 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 they don't yeah, love yeah. DeMarco like that. I get what they you love mean. other guys. Yeah, and it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a real TV combo. It's like, you kind of got to see how they look at cats. I get what you mean. Tyron Smith is gone. Sure is. Tyron Smith is probably the best Cowboys player not named Zach Martin in the last 10 years. Since the triplets left. Yes. Yeah. He's gone. Mm -hmm. Zeke was beloved, beloved, gone. To Joy's point, Shady's point, we've seen beloved. Tyron Smith, his name will be in the ring of honor one day. He will likely be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's gone. Is it that far-fetched that if you're going to let go of Tyron, I mean, Tyron Smith, first-round pick, $100 million, gave you a family deal, Tyron. I get it, it. yeah, yeah. You're not going to let go of that. Here's, and I know you said we got to go to break. And my question, and, and Joy, Joy brought it up. I know we can't always predict how this is going to go. We don't know who's going to come available and who's not. But what is the realistic alternative that is better than a guy that was just second team all pro? Joy mentioned Russell Wilson. He got traded. Matthew Stafford got traded. You can do these blockbuster deals. They can't trade Dak. He also has a no trade clause. He's got a no tag clause and a no trade clause. What's going to happen is the Cowboys are going to de- get a deal done with him before March of next year, or he's going to hit the open market as a 31-year-old all-pro caliber quarterback. Those guys get paid massive amounts of money. And again, if you can't trade Dak and get the haul that goes along with that, which they can't unless he gives them the say-so, what's the better alternative? But don't, is it, what, is can't it I ask you? Can't I ask you the exact? I'm glad we're having this conversation now. I could ask you the exact same thing about Tyron Smith. Cowboys currently don't have a tackle. Yeah. Tyron Smith about to go make $20 million up to with the Jets. Tyron Smith as a left tackle is the second most important position in football outside of quarterback. And the Cowboys let him walk. I'm going I'm to get real in the weeds with you here. I'm going to I'm go for it. Oh, we'll get to it then. You can't. I mean, there, there's eight first round caliber offensive tackles in the NFL draft this year. There's a good chance there will be a starting right away caliber left tackle available in the draft. That doesn't happen at the quarterback position. Those guys go high. The, cor- the position's inflated. We're talking about his... never draft a quarterback high, though. They absolutely don't. They haven't needed to because they've fallen ass backward into Tony <laughs> Romo as an undrafted free agent. <laughs> and Dak Prescott's a fourth-round pick. Maybe that'll work for them again. But the law of averages says probably not. And I go back to the point, I'm not even trying to tell you Dak is... The like the best quarterback in the league. I don't think that. I know. I'm just saying. Let me. I'm just. Yeah. But what is the realistic option that is going to be better than Dak? And again, for for Dave, the Cowboys. Have you ever gotten sick of something? All the time. So sometimes just something else is the better option. It's easy and, and to say I, that. I know it is. It's I know easy it is, to say teams that. Do this all the time. They, the Cowboys they, do this they, all the time. I don't know. But and then nothing's like. Do you really want to pay him sixty million dollars a year? I don't. Because you keep saying Kirk Cousins, he didn't get that right. So now you're going to play a quarterback who's not the best in the NFL, about, about 11, 12, 13? Yeah. Dak Prescott, right? 10th. Yeah, Whatever. Cool. You're 10th. 60 million dollars at the top of the market? And I know what's going to happen. I know we're not going to the Super Bowl, and I know we're not going to the NFC Championship game. We know these things. So why would I pay you $60 million? It's easy to say that that's not worth it. It's a bad investment. Until the guy that comes after him can't even keep you in the yeah, race. Yeah, but it's also tough to look around the league and see guys like it is. Baker Mayfield doing more in the postseason can in the I, same year. Can I say less. one more thing? And making less, way less. Jerry Jones is, and I, I don't mean to be glib about this, but Jerry Jones is an 81-year-old man. He's trying to get the Cowboys to their first championship since the 1995 season. What sounds more realistic to fit it into that window, to do it quickly? Answer this question, too. Keeping the expensive all-pro or jumping off that diving board into no man's land and not knowing how well it's going to work out. It sounds easy until you're the one that has What's, to do it. What does the history tell you, though? That's a great question to ask to the world. Let's answer it. What does the history tell me of this track record of success? You asked. Of doing you, it? You say he's 81 years old. He's trying to win a championship. And you said, should we pay the guy we have now, right? That's what you're trying to say. Yeah. Or, or get somebody new, right? Yeah. My question is, or my answer is like, well, what are you going to do? 
Because we've seen what Dak Prescott does. We've seen it. And that's it, it, it is easy to say that that is not good enough until you have lived with what is not good enough. That's my <laughs> only point. Well, guess you, we'll probably get six men out of quarterback. They ain't going to win Go look at the 2021 quarterback draft class. Like five of those guys taking the first round. Dave, I got to interrupt like, you for one more. I know more. we got to go. Where'd you go to college? LSU. LSU. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs> Tigers. LSU. Caitlin Clark. This is about three done. hours from now. It is a huge event. It is a rematch of last year's national championship game. But it is bigger than just basketball. Basketball family. This has implications of all sorts, all types, all kinds. 10 million people watched last year. More will watch tonight, and you better be one of them. We're talking about it next. Don't forget to check us out every day on the Fox Sports Channel on Sirius. Why did I put the best player LSU on there? Well, they- hey, no, no. Hey, no, no. Tonight, it is the night. I mean, a historical matchup, NCAA tournament. You got LSU, you got Iowa, but you got Caitlin Clark, America. You're talking the all-time most points ever in college basketball. Caitlin Clark, if you have yet to watch a women's basketball game in your life, Tonight is the night to start. Last year, it peaked at 12 million viewers. It averaged 10 million viewers, one of the 100 most watched sporting events. And now we get a rematch. Quite literally, both teams have lived up to the hype. Last year, you're talking about players of the year, Angel Reese. This year, Caitlin Clark has been incredibly individual and Iowa one seed. LSU, they have been incredible, incredible individually. Joy, this is a game that I literally have like a circle. I'm not a circler. That's James Jones. James Jones. But I, but I literally, I, this is, I, you can't be I more started. excited. I did the start about the game. Yeah. Literally, I, I was looking back before, before the matchups, and I was like, I just pray they both win. I just pray they both win so they can meet and play each other. And it happened, and we will get to see it in two hours from now. Who in the world, though, Joyce, the most important question I'll ask you all day, who needs a win more, LSU or Caitlin Clark? Caitlin Clark. LSU has the ring. Sure do. Remember this? Yeah. I seen the trophy. Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> so, so the trophy nice. Mm-hmm. The trophy's very nice. Rings are nice. Championships are nice. And while none of us feel that Angel Reese is as good as Caitlin Clark, <gasps> we don't. Caitlin Clark is the best player in college basketball right now, Ooh. but certainly in women's college basketball. She's the all-time leading scorer for men's and women's college basketball. She is an incredible player. She is sweeping the world. Superstar, but she doesn't have a championship. And if you're going to have conversations about her being the best player of all time, mm-hmm. well, you got to bring up some names. <laughs> like Diana Taurasi, who has three championships, two most outstanding players, two time Naismith winner, Sue Bird, Maya Moore, Brianna Stewart, there we go. Brittany Griner, Candace Parker. They got rings and things. And you can't just jump everybody Mm -hmm. just through scoring, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, to be called the greatest player of all time. I do think you have to win a championship to just shut the conversation down. And that's no knock on what she's accomplished. She's incredible. I am looking forward to watching her career, and I've enjoyed watching it so far. But if you're talking about who needs to win more, LSU has a championship. And and really, Caitlin's standing on her own right now. She's commanding the sports world right now. Everyone is talking about her, and deservedly so. But it is something else to win a championship. And when you've had multiple opportunities to do so, which she has, and you have another great team again this year, which she does, and you're the best player, we hold everyone to those standards. So I don't want to move the needle to be a prisoner of the moment. So I I think that because LSU beat her in the championship last year, and they are trying to avenge it, and she's having – the season that she's having with the momentum that she's having, I have to say Caitlin Clark needs this more. I have to restate, like, this is a bigger game than most games that you will see in the 2024 calendar year of any sport. It doesn't get bigger Shady McCoy than this, or at least it rarely does. This is not hyperbole. This is all fact. LSU, Caitlin Clark, who needs to win more? I'm glad my girl is on my side now. I like to hear that. Last year was a different story, but okay. Another year. Before I answer this question, yes, right, this, look how it's pictured. The question is, who needs a, a win more, LSU or Caitlin Curry Clark? Yeah. <laughs> That's how good this girl is, though. So I'm going to go LSU. It just shows you that they need to win more. Y'all talking about one player. Everybody that, that, that Joy just talked about, all them greats, right? It was a point in time where they were getting All-Americans and All-Americans and All-Americans, right? Every time you talk about a, a, a good player from, from, from these teams you talked about, yeah, like um, UConn, teams. all that, mm-hmm. UConn, Tennessee, all these, they had other All-Americans going there. Yeah. Look at Iowa. Have y'all looked at Iowa? Mm-hmm. It's the reason why you didn't say, who needs to win more, I let you in Iowa. You put only uh, Kerry Clark. Clark on there. 
I'll let him put that name in there. <laughs> anyway, my thing is, when I watch these teams play, right, it's a big difference. It's a big gap. I can't believe that Iowa's his favorite. Andrew Reese is a hell of a player, right? I, I think she, in my opinion, I think she gets more hype because of um, the things she does, right? her swagger. I love that type. The attitude she has, the passion, right? But she's not even the best player of the team, if you're asking me. When you look at Caitlin, she's the best player on the planet. So when you're asking me, like, who needs to win more? It has to be LSU. You have to win this game. It's in your favor. You have better athletes. You have better talent. You have more highly profiled players. Yep. It's easy. When I, when I look at um, LSU, they can win games without their best player or their second. When I look at Iowa, they can't win nothing without Kurt, without uh, Caitlin. So for me, it got to be LSU because this is a layup. This game tonight, if the refs don't cheat, no, I'm being serious because you know how it is in college. Everybody, up. everybody loves stories. Everybody loves stories, all right? And I think the way Kayla's playing, it will be great to get her in the finals and all that. I get it. But if the refs play the game like that's supposed to be played, right, and you look at this game, LSU should win this game by, what, 20-some points? Because last year, was Iowa favorite? They beat them down. Well, who was favorite last year? I it, was, it, was it was closer. It was still down. close, but they got blown away for a reason because they have better athletes and better talent. It should be easy. I know it's Shady. My money is on LSU. Shady's trying to put the pressure on LSU to make it look better if Caitlin Clark doesn't win. I'm not the guy to ask. Y'all know that. Like, I wore this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you. I ride for the boot in all things. <laughs> if LSU's playing table tennis, I'm going to be there. So, obviously, I'm riding with my Lady Tigers. But all the it, it, there, there's no pressure on LSU. None oh. whatsoever. LSU wants to win this game. Not, not only, like, we want to get back to the Final Four. We would love to go back to back. And we would love to knock Caitlin Clark out of a second consecutive tournament because we're already the villains. We might as well just embrace it. But as far as need, need what? Kim Mulkey showed up, and the goal was put LSU on that level. They've already won a national title. Mm -hmm. If their title defense ends tonight, they made it to the Elite Eight. Is that embarrassing? I don't think so. They're the lower seed. It's one verse three. Man. Vegas favors Iowa. So clearly a lot of people disagree with Shady because okay. – Iowa is expected by Las Vegas to win this game. Angel Reese has her ring. Kim Mul Mulkey has already had her ring. This team has the potential to come back largely intact. Like, K Kaylin Clark is, is done after this, She right? decided to, yep. She Angel Reese back. could come back. Flaugé Johnson, Michaela Plaza. Williams. Like, all LSU's team could be back and could be right back on this stage. So, yeah, I, I really want to win for a lot of reasons. I don't think LSU needs it at all. Caitlin Clark, like Joy said, this is the thing missing from her resume. And it's going, it, she's going to be a, a, a phenomenal player regardless. She, got, she already is. She's going to be wonderful at the next level as well. But she'll look back with regret that she didn't win a championship yeah. if she doesn't get it done. So all, in my opinion, all of it Ooh. is on Caitlin Clark. I'll get, to, I'll get yeah. to that momentarily. I, I think two things. First, I will say I think Caitlin Clark needs to win more because in large part of what Joy said, Caitlin Clark is the best player playing right now, like Don Staley, head coach of South Carolina, said. But to be the best player ever, which many people are trying to make her, you got to at least have some sort of jewelry. Brianna Stewart, in my mind, is the best player of this generation. Brianna Stewart has four mm -hmm. national championships. Brianna Stewart was the first player who I said, I'm going to go watch a college women's basketball game for her. I got my tickets. I went to the stadium because I saw Brianna Stewart and what she was able to do. She stood out on a team full of stars. How you shine brightest when you're on a team full of stars and you got four of them. Then you went to the WNBA and you got another two of them along with players of the year, et cetera. So for me, if Caitlin Clark is going to continue to be mentioned in greatest of all time, you got to win a ring. Thus, you have to win tonight. But... Okay. This is where I agree with, I believe it was Shady saying, if LSU loses to Kaitlyn Clark, what y'all got to show for in the 2023 season? Y'all talking about 2022. But, but, what y'all got to show for life in the 2023-2024 season? You can't let Kaitlyn be the better individual and have the better team. Hold on, hold on. We came in the end of from Iowa, though. Have y'all watched Iowa play for real? Like, let's just keep it a buck, though. Did y have y'all watched them play? Mm-hmm. They look special to y'all? No. Did anybody let LeBron off the hook wait, wait, when he lost to better Warriors I'm like, I'm, like, not, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not even going to that because nobody here can name anybody from Iowa's team. I watched them. I've been studying them. I'm like, yo, who else is it? When I look at Flage, right, mm -hmm. I think she's the best player on the team. You can look at so many. You can look at the talent level, though. You can look at the height. You can look at the size. You can look at the height. I don't even want to do this because I, I just I love what the game is doing. But do the job? women's basketball, they're, 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 they're like – 
I've never watched so much. I'm, I'm so glued to this TV because of all the talent, all the hype. And I think Caitlyn has a lot to do with that. Even Angel Reese, I think she deserves credit. Uh, she, she needs to, to give some credit to Caitlyn for giving her some of that career because for real, for all the hype that she's getting a lot of that's from doing all this Attention. and all that and all the talking. Because if you watch her play, she's a good player. But when you watch them, she don't, like, it's not special to me. When I look at Johnson, Flange, she looks special. Playing log on defense, can shoot, can drive, can dribble, can, can create. That looks special to me. So when I look at this LSU team from, from the top to the bottom, from the backups and all, they're a good team. Let's say that Kayla gets in foul trouble, though. They in trouble. If Angel gets in foul trouble, they cool. So when y'all look at this game, it's like when you comparing um, Stewart and all these other people, you can't. They had, you just talked about shining bright with other stars. We can't name no other star on Iowa. Who the hell want to transfer to Iowa? Nowadays, NIL and transfer port is the biggest thing in college basketball and football, whatever it is in college in general. Now, who the hell is transferring to play in Iowa? Mm -hmm. For real? So when you talk about pressure, all the pressure is on the best player in college basketball, that's Caitlin and the Iowa and the regular Iowa team. It's an elite player versus an uh, elite basketball team. Let's just keep it 100. But that, that it's basketball. Talk it's about LeBron. I dare you. We put pressure on the biggest stars. Nobody wants to hear that. It is a sport where a transcendent right. player can make that. Who by themselves? Yeah, I mean, also, Who I, I, by I, I don't know that I could go to like Iowa. Is just that the rest of the team is a is a bunch of bums. I didn't call them that. I, the, the, well, I didn't call them that. That's fair. I wouldn't say that the drop off is as tremendous as we're saying. I do think that LSU as a team is better, right. but they have some nice players. They have a really good sophomore. They have, they have a bunch of seniors. They're a very experienced team. They were most of them. Uh, some of them were there last year. Gabby Marshall. Like they have good shooters. They make the most threes of any women's team this season. Like they, they are already they, one seed in the NCAA tournament. Seed, they're <laughs> favors. Like it's not just because of Kaylin Clark. I don't want to dismiss the rest of the roster completely. I do agree with you. LSU top to bottom is a better team, and Kaylin Clark is higher. But. That if you're going to be spoken about the way that we speak about Caitlin Clark, which we should, right. then I do think that you should be answering Vegas's call. This is what it is. It's, they're, they're not the underdogs. Name, name me some. Name me some players that just wins with nobody else. Name me some. But that's what. But, I mean, that's, I what, but that's what I would say, though, Shady. Yes. To me, the greats. And again, we're not. This isn't a national championship. So winning this only gets her to the Final Four. <laughs> so well, I say that I mean, to say... Imagine being South Carolina Hold, right hold on for like, a second. I say, I say that to say, though, Shady, if Caitlin is going to continue to ascend to being Caitlin, this is when you put the team on your back. This wasn't LeBron. LeBron in 2007 NBA Finals, he lost to the Spurs. But he did score 29 of the last 30 versus the Pistons. He did score 25 straight. She didn't get to she the don't, NBA she Finals. Don't get, oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't. There's no mistaking. She's the best player in college basketball. She's one of my favorites. She's going to ball tonight. She, she got ball. to me. She has to drag them there. But what I'm saying is, but like, I mean, like, let's be real about this. Like, we we speaking, I guess, because she's doing so well, and they are, and they're hyping her up, and all this, and this attention. But who wins games, right, or series, wherever you want to put it, against one good player with no other help, and the other team is loaded? From the best player to play basketball, Michael Jordan, he couldn't do it. He had to team up with somebody, not team up, but he had to partner with some good players like Pippen and Rodman, and go on and forth and forth. But it's like. Who does that with nobody? I think I could even hear this more, honestly, if this was a national championship game. But this is the Elite Eight. Elite eight. So what's, if, that, what's that matter? That means they have rounds they to go. More work to so do. this is this is yeah, they like they win this, like, cool. Now you have an even bigger opponent that you're going up against. And and yeah. I, I don't I don't want to make it seem like I'm diminishing anything that Caitlin's done because she's an incredible player and has been She's the best, a, in my opinion. Un, unbelievable to watch. But it, it is dismissive of other greats to just put her above all of them if she doesn't win. if she yeah. doesn't win one shady here's my thought though here's my thought my sober calm thought is what i love about college sports at least watching them is there is more of a talent disparity than in the pros for sure in college shady you sure. can rush for 250 yards right you play savannah state you can go get 250 in the nfl it's a lot harder to get 250 Right. In college, you can watch a quarterback put the team on his back, throw for 300, rush for 200. How in the world did he do that? In the NFL, you might be able to see it. You'll see it two, three, four times a year. A lot harder to do. My thought is, Caitlin, as good as she is, because she is that much better in my mind than everybody on the court. In the Elite Eight, I want to be able to see her Put the team on her back. I understand it's not one-on-one, -on -one, it's five-on-five. Mm -hmm. five. But what it is is the talent gap in my mind between Caitlin and everybody else is so large that I want to see Caitlin be historic, be the GOAT, put the team on her back, and carry them there. Okay, well, I'll say this. If Caitlin wins this game, in my opinion, all the other greats y'all talking about that had a lot of talent that y'all don't want to talk about, 
If she wins this game, she's the best player I've ever played the game. What about a natty, though? It's just it's only If she natty. win this game, she's the best out of all the other teams. I'm, I'm saying it right now because she don't have no help. Y'all, the teams I keep speaking about, y'all talking about UConn. Y'all know what they've been doing of for course. years? Huh? Of course. No wonder they win championships, they get the best talent. Tennessee. We go with, with, um, with um, 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 Candace Parker. That was my mm-hmm. favorite back in the day. They had a solid team. And coach. Listen, yeah, LSU, coach. they have more than Angel Reese that go to the pros next. Yeah, right? For sure. Can we say the same about Iowa? But here's my what, question, like, though, Sadie. If, 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 if you're here? setting the bar already for if, if Iowa beats LSU, they still got it. You might see South Carolina. That's what I'm saying. Like, they they LSU is not even a one seed. Last year, they beat, um, they beat South Carolina, right? Mm-hmm. If they played that game 10 times out of 10 times, they're going to have some same things. We 9 out of 1. Or 9 out of 10 times, they're going to lose. Mm-hmm. So they beat them on some just Because it happens in sports, right? Course, Everything course, can happen in course. sports. Some fouls, some shots. Right. Think the ball bounce this way. That's what sports is made for. That's what gambling, that's all this thing is about. March Madness. But if we really watching this thing for real, y'all will keep it 100. And y'all, and y'all take the names off the sheet. Better yet, if you watch the game, and nobody never watched basketball, right? And you watch women's basketball, you don't know another names. You, you turn the volume down. And you watch both of these teams. You don't know who Caitlin Clark is, and you don't know who Angel Reese is. None of these guys. You don't know Johnson, nobody mm-hmm. is. If you watch for the first time, you will say, yo, man, this purple team is way better than this Iowa team. Agreed. But you will say, yo, this 22 looks way amazing. Better. Agreed. And that's what happened tonight. But in my qu- here's my question, though, Shady. Final question. Final question. because you, you're Yes, because you're most passionate. We've been watching sports and college sports for, call it 80 years. Obviously, if you go back to the Harvards and the Dartmouths and the Yales, it goes back to like the 19, early 1900s, 1908 and whatnot. 100 years, we can call it 80 years. In what sport of any gender do we proclaim someone to be the greatest without a ring? College football players, your greatest have rings. College basketball players, men, your greatest have rings. Uh, professional, your greatest have rings. Wait, your greatest, they just have wait, rings. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. So we're talking about college, right? I'm saying pros and what, what we, sports. Just let me know what we're talking about, because, like, there's a lot of greats that played in college. I don't have no rings. Don't make me sit here and name them, because it would look bad. Yeah, we, did, we, we didn't consider them to be the greatest of college sports. Like who? Like, my great is they have rings. That didn't win a Thank national Thank you. They have, Sadie, they got rings. Like, that doesn't mean that they were the best in college and the NFL, because there were plenty of the greatest in the NFL we're who were not is. necessarily okay. great if you want to say, If you want to say, for me, I love Cam Newton. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let, let's just... Let's, if you want to say, like, the, uh, I love me a Cam Newton. Tim Tebow, I think, was one of the greatest. In college. Okay, college. okay hold on, hold on. So, like... If we just say who's the best full player of all time, right? Let's say best quarterback of all time. Would be who? I'd put Cam in the college. College? No, 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 no. No, you said the greatest, the greats, right? So the best full player of all time college would be. College or pro? It's two different leagues. Which one? Two different sports. You want me to say Tom Brady. But which one? Where are you he, going with this? He knows something. Where are you going yeah, but, with this? All but, I'm saying but, is if we look at all the best players, right? They all haven't won championships in, in college. Of the course, best college player. But also, no one's saying that Caitlin Clark is the best basketball player ever. right now. This, this like, she, I, she's, she's not she's ever the best played. That, that was your, that was your question. You said the best college, so, college player. Okay, so the best college player. Yes. Right? Yeah. So this, this, it's hard. that's a hard answer. That's a hard question. You know why? Because when I look at it, might be different for me and you, though. Yep. But I feel like college is a bigger gap from the best to the worst. Yes, sir. Compared to the NFL. Right. The, 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 at the championship level of the Chiefs, who's the worst team in football? The, the Panthers? Yeah. It's, a, it's a nice margin, but it ain't as big as... A yeah, college, yeah, 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 college. Yeah, of course. So when I, even it's like recruiting. Like who's who the hell is going to Iowa? Nobody's going there. And then when you watch the game, you see it. It's like y'all seen them play? Let me ask you. Have y'all seen them play? Yes. So what the hell is the problem? When you watch Iowa play, you see one girl. But what I'm saying you see is one girl. What I'm saying is we you see LSU. What I'm saying. They were hold up before you because you say you were saying. But what I'm saying is this: <laughs> when I watch UCLA, they played uh, uh, LSU, right? Yeah. Andrew got in foul trouble. Yo, the back, yo, the backup came Correct. in. There was they were losing. The backup came in there. She had him winning. Faded I just, ways. I'm like, who Shady, is that? I, I believe that you are. Right. I believe you're being a prisoner of the moment. Reason okay. I say this is right. that 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 team that Cam Newton won with in college, that Auburn team, nobody went to the league. Nobody. They had one player who was a fifth round pick, an offensive lineman, and he drug that okay. team cool. to win a championship. And that's right. eleven on eleven. All right. Cool. So what I'm saying is, if Kate, if you're going to say Caitlin's the best ever. But yeah, you she t- has to win. How are you talking about a ring? Why we can't compare Auburn to Iowa and Bass? You can't do it. People want to go to Auburn. I hear, Am I lying? I hear they gonna they're gonna get some tough recruits. What type of recruits is Iowa getting though? Talent. Before yeah. this year, when we even talked before these last two years with, with Caitlin, like who was even talking about Iowa ba- basketball? What are we talking about here? Listen, yo, I'm not trying to be biased here, right? I'm just trying to be as honest as possible. Y'all can't sit here and tell me when y'all watch these girls play. Y'all talking about Iowa? If that listen. 
if 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 Caitlin didn't play for that team, we wouldn't even be discussing it. The question Acho just asked is, who needs to win more? LSU, a university that has all Americans, <laughs> or Iowa that has one player. I'm and he didn't even say it. Iowa. He said Caitlin Clark. I'm glad you brought it back to the question. What are you talking about? Because who needs it? I'm in, I'm in this. Like, I'm in the fan base, right? I can tell you right now, and I, it, it's not fair, Shady. I'll meet you there. It's not fair. If LSU loses That means he this, watched it. That means if, he watched it. He watched the teams. If LSU yeah. loses this game, <laughs> it'll be disappointing because the object is to win. Nobody's gonna kill this team for losing this game. You lose to a higher seed in the Elite Eight in your national title defense because you already did this. Yeah, it's gonna be disappointing. Nobody's gonna care. If Caitlin Clark loses, there's always gonna be that. Well, eh. Typically in sports, that's the, just how it goes. It's the, not the, fair. The bigger, the stronger, the faster fair. team, athletic team typically wins, right? So, normally, so they think, normally win, right? So you think Iowa should be the underdog tonight? What do y'all think is a crazier question? What do you think? I think they should. I, I think they should as well. Who should be favorite? Uh, LSU. I think LSU. Easy. Like, come Why on. Why aren't they then? Because people that gamble, they bet, they put all the money on Iowa. People that love the sport, that have, probably haven't watched it, now they're watching. Oh, my God. I hear about Caitlin Clark. Let's watch her. They hyping her up. Be smarter with your money. They will. <laughs> they don't build those buildings. You know, my money. Look, look, look. I'll cheer for uh, Caitlin, but I'm betting on LSU. I'm out of that money. <laughs> <laughs> Family, when we return, a lot to get to. The UFL made their highly anticipated de- debut this Ooh. weekend, and there was some phenomenal action, but we narrowed it down to the top plays Ooh. of the week. Plus, more next on Why. All right, let's transition to LeBron. Truly mind-blowing stuff, family, that this dude is doing. Y'all may have missed it. LeBron dropped 40 points. Get this. At 39 years of age, he made nine threes yesterday. That's the most threes he's made in a game in his career. It ties the most. He went nine of ten from the arc. Not nine of ten from the three free throw line, Shady. Nine of ten from three. I watched the game. He's How? How impressive was LeBron's performance? <sighs> he goes to New York. He's acts up. <laughs> That's like his thing. He just acts up in New York. But, uh, I mean, LeBron James is LeBron James, right? It, it, we haven't seen anything like him. We love to talk about how Michael Jordan's the goat of, of all goats. But even MJ, I mean, he had a, a time where he couldn't do it no more. LeBron, we haven't seen it yet. And I think that if you look at this, this Lakers team, they're getting better and better and better, man. And it, it's around that co- calendar year where they just know, all right, guys, playoffs coming around. They did the same thing last year. They start heating up and heating up. Got to the play-in. They start heating up. Got to the Western Conference Finals. So I just love seeing LeBron James just setting records. I mean, right now he has the most 30-point games, right? It went from MJ, now MJ's two, and LeBron's one. There's nothing LeBron can do. Happy for him. Yeah, I want to say it's not impressive because it's LeBron. (laughs) But I really hope that everyone is paying attention to what LeBron is doing. Not even, I wouldn't say the breadcrumbs. I mean, he talked about the ends, which... He doesn't normally do, approaching. What he's doing is remarkable. And I know that he has a lot of haters. I know it's very easy to be on the other side of the polarization that LeBron James represents. But I said this a few weeks ago, there will never be another LeBron James. And we always say that when there's, when there's greats. There's never going to be another this. There's never going to be another Jordan. There's never going to be another this. There will never be another LeBron James. And, and for so many reasons other than his play that he is, like, look at the stat line for the, for the bench. It's insane what he's doing at the age in which he's doing it. And I don't even want to bring up the age, but you have to because mm-hmm. the amount of basketball that he's played is astonishing. He has played so many basketball games, uh, the Olympics, all of the postseason games. It, it's, he's played seasons more than what he's even clocked as an NBA it's player. Crazy when you think about like the extra games. Yes. He like he's had career. so much experience on the court to do what he's doing right now. I just hope that everyone is enjoying watching this version of LeBron James, whatever happens, because there will come a time when we will not have LeBron James. I am not looking forward to that day at all. Mm. I've been enjoying LeBron's career, but this is really I don't want to be hyperbolic here, but just just enjoy LeBron because this is really, really impressive what he's doing. It's impressive, Dave, but I will tell you why it doesn't matter. Incredibly impressive. There's three 40-point games a season LeBron has, more than Kawhi, more than PG, more than, I believe, Kyrie, more than Jokic. The nine, the nine made threes in one game LeBron has, more than Clay, more than Book, more than Dane. 
uh, more than greats. I'm talking greats. But it's not about LeBron for me. Dave, Joy, Shady, it's about what the Lakers can do. The bench won one of 12. Yeah. One of 12. So while LeBron was incredibly impressive, LeBron don't care about Braun anymore. If LeBron ever cared about Braun, he wouldn't be a pass-first player. Come on now. LeBron cares about the team. We saw last year in the Western Conference <clears throat> Finals, LeBron have 31 points, not in a game and a half. And they lost. They lost. The Lakers go as far as the bench will take them. The Lakers don't go as far as LeBron will take them. So while LeBron's 40-point performance, it was incredibly impressive. Family is home. It was meaningless because the Lakers bench was atrocious. Dave, it reminds me very simply of this, and then please take the verbal baton and run with it. When you are in a dispute with a significant other and they do everything except the thing you ask them to do. But I got your car washed. But I filled up the tank with gas. But I cleaned the house. But all you wanted them to do was be at your work function on time. Yeah, LeBron, you dropped 40. Cool. But what about the bench? All we need from the Lakers is the bench and AD. I don't care about the 40. I don't care about the 9 threes. Impressive. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll take the car wash. But... I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of sad in my opinion. But is it real, though? I, I mean, yeah, I guess it's real, but that, it was, it's fun. It's okay to have fun <laughs> watching sports. So, I mean, guy, 9 of 10 from 3. And you're just like, yeah, whatever. No. Uh, no. I mean, I get what you're saying. I get like, do I, and I guess to a degree, you're right. Because, like, if I was picking it right now, do I think the Lakers are going to win a championship? No. But they are. And I disagree with the, the idea oh. that they're not doing what you're asking them to do. The Lakers are, I mean. They're rolling one six of seven. They've won six of seven. You realize at this point last year, they were a full, like, eight games worse than they are right now. They, like, they were. And I was on the show regularly last spring. Like, they were battling just to be at 500. They're handling that. Like, I know they're not. Still a nine, though. I, it's still a nine seed. It's the West. The West is it's a jumble every year, it seems like. And, and like I said, if you're saying nothing short of winning a championship matters, then I guess it doesn't matter. But I'm having, to Joy's point, a hell of a time watching a guy who's 39 years old just refuse here's, to here's my give problem. in to time. And this so, will hit you in the heart. This will hit you in the heart. 2016, Dave and I were working together. It's a true story. True I bet story. I know where you're going with this. Cowboys. We were like, yo, we started the show on, on social media called Cover 4. Enjoy True Story. Shady True Story. Dave and I were like, yo, if they go to the Super Bowl, We'll get to go. It'll be fun. It'll be a grand old time. He's Cowboys were winning. Still they were winning. They were winning. They started off 13-3. and three. But I was looking at the team, and I said, Dave, though we're having fun watching them, they're going to lose early because there are too many flaws. So that fun and grand old time that we're having, it evaporates like the wind. They didn't lose early last year, though. They made a run all the way to the uh, conference finals. You think they can do that again? I'm not betting against LeBron James. And, I, I mean, and let's not forget, at this point in his career, like healthy AD, it is very much about that if he's doing his thing. But no, if those two guys are healthy and clicking, again, do I think they're going to win the championship? I wouldn't bet on it. But I'm also not going to count out a team that has those two dudes and particularly has LeBron James. You realize, like, I didn't even know, I didn't even know we were doing this topic yesterday. I turned on the second half of the game. And to go back to what Joy said, it didn't even register with me that he was doing anything amazing. Because I don't, I'll take it back to Dallas again. We'll just make this a Dallas episode. Remember oh the end of Dirk? God. You remember the end of Dirk's career? Of course. When like, like not? when Dirk rose up and did some Dirk stuff at the end of his career, you were like, guy still got it. Way to go, man. And it was, you know, it happened intermittently. He was, you know, has that ever been the case with LeBron? Like I, to this day, I am never surprised when he does some wild stuff. You realize he scored 42 weeks ago. Mm. So no, I'm not. Do I think the Lakers are going to win the NBA? Absolutely not. But am I writing them off? Never. Shady, can we talk about our running backs now? I'm putting a crown on my boy, man. You have to <laughs> disrespect LeBron James like that. <laughs> when we return, there might be a reunion in Dallas that they hope will take them over the Super Bowl hump. It sounds like Ezekiel Elliott and the Cowboys are potentially eyeing a return, but does it make sense? Their former first-round top five overall pick wants to head home, but will the Cowboys accept them? Bring them home. That's next on Speed. All right, family, had to bring my guy Dave Hellman up here because, Dave, this is maybe the most interesting topic for sports fans that care about non 
quarterback positions. Ezekiel Elliott, Cowboys star running back. There is word of a reunion. He spent his first seven seasons in Dallas. He was a first round pick, top five, number four overall. I believe he led the league in rushing all purpose. Dude was putting up 1,800 yards. A huge piece to the Cowboys' success. They didn't replace him last year. Should there be an Ezekiel Elliott reunion? He spent last year on the Patriots. Cowboys need a running back. What you think? Can I be really honest with you? Of course. This, to me, is like if the ship is sinking and we're arguing about, like, the furniture on the deck. Like, oh, what do you think about this? Like, <laughs> they need a left tackle. They need to do. They need to figure out what's going on with their quarterback. They lost half their defense to the commanders. <laughs> they haven't signed CD. They haven't had Micah. And we're talking about Zeke? I mean, look, I love Zeke. I love what he did for the Cowboys. If you bring him back... This is not the rushing champion. This is Zeke Elliott, who averaged three and a half yards per carry for New England. I mean, he could be a piece of your running back room, but like, please don't talk to me like this is going to fix any of the Cowboys issues. But it's not. It, it's the, one of the Cowboys issues was running back okay. last year. Sure. It was red zone offense last year. It was the fact that they probably missed 12 of those rushing touchdowns that Ezekiel Elliott had in the 2022 season. Now he only had three rushing touchdowns last year. He only averaged 3.5 yards to carry last year, but they did miss the heartbeat of Ezekiel Elliott. Look, and I'd be, it would, and, and this is why the Cowboys are doing it. Let's be honest. He's a fan favorite. He's a franchise icon cowboy fans can get some use out of their old jerseys maybe <laughs> it'd be and and for the money like we're not talking about a big time deal ironically the cowboys are paying zeke six million dollars on the last contract he signed they're paying him not to be there so yeah if they want to bring him in on a small deal to be the number two or number three fine but don't sell me like this is something game changing. Honestly, they're gonna go draft your guy, Jonathan Brooks, out of the University of Texas. Like, would you they rather more work to do? Would you rather them use draft capital on a back or just go pay Zeke? Both. On it, like, Ooh. no. They, um, Rico Dowdle is the only running back on the team right now that has done anything in the NFL. Deuce Vaughn's there. We know he didn't do a whole lot. You sign Zeke to a cheap veteran deal. They're going to need to draft a guy, though. The future of this position is in the draft. So, yeah, it, it'd be cool, and you can wear your jerseys again, but this is just not a math-changing situation for the Cowboys. Let's change the math of this conversation. Heading to the desk, adding Joy Taylor and LaShawn McCoy. Shady, you led the National Football League in rushing yards. You led the National Football League in rushing touchdowns in separate years. You know what it takes to be great. Ezekiel Elliott has no longer shown statistically that he's great. But should the Cowboys want a reunion of a former heartbeat of the team? Did you know that I led my decade in rushing, too? I thought AD did. That was you thought. <laughs> I'm telling you. From 2010 yo, to my 2020. Man. Yo, my man. I just <laughs> I, told you I believe him. what I did. So next time you want to talk about rushing, just bring it in there. Right? You, what's your decade? Like when you got 2010? drafted to 10 years later? You can say 29. You can say 20, 2009. So 29 to 2019, you led the league in rushing. Yeah. Can I get that fat checked, please? Andy, oh, off man. camera. Can I please get that fat check? Can, can, can I get the order, please? America, I will report back on what LaShawn McCoy just said. You know what? For this question, I, I like it. First of all, before I answer it, wait, I know they're trying to get a running back, but is it, uh, are they trying to get um, Jacobs from, uh, is he still available? Jacobs. Josh Jacobs? Josh Jacobs. No, he's a backer. Yeah, cool. Saquon Barkley, are they trying to get him? No. Gone. Woo! Aaron Jones, I see he got, it's, Gone. oh, okay, oh, yeah, yo, I'll bring Zach, I'll bring Zeke back. Cool, I'm cool with that, I'll bring Zeke back, yeah, why not? I mean, the Eagle fans, we, we don't mind it. <laughs> we love Zeke. Now we love Zeke. So, yeah, why not? I think they, they drafted him, had a great career there. So, yeah, bring him to the Cowboys. <sighs> thought they were trying to get, like, you know, the other guys. You thought they were trying to spend money in free agency. Yeah, but I thought. They, they decided not to do that. Yeah. I mean, they don't. They usually don't. Yeah. Do that. I, I, at the right price, why not? Zeke is not what he once was. He's not going to be expected to be what he once was, maybe by Cowboys fans. But in reality, he's not going to be expected to be that. He wasn't expected to be that last year. That's mm. not what New England brought him in there for. So I think he has still some value. He's a veteran player. Obviously, he's somebody that has a, real, a lot of relationships in the building. I think that matters as well. And those type of guys can bring a lot of value value to the team. They're still going to need to draft a running back. They still have other positions that they need to fill and other things that are more of a priority. I agree with Dave. If this is supposed to be something that is going to be life-changing in Dallas, I wouldn't agree to that, but I don't think that he doesn't add value, particularly if he's affordable, which if they're already paying him, might as well pay him to be in the building. Dave, do you think that Shady led his decade in Russia? 
I, I told you, when Shade, if I know one thing about LaShawn McCoy, he knows his stats, dude. Like, if Shady tells you something that he did in the league, he's usually right. I so, can yeah. Tell I'm by backing him. Emmanuel's tone. <laughs> that Shady's right. He gets too excited. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He has his face. <laughs> What does he didn't know me? Look how excited he is. Well, if I didn't, what, what do you mean? I mean, you, you, you seen the work I put in? You, you was yeah, zero, you was no. zero Thanksgiving to Dallas when I did what I had to do. I was. You, you witnessed that. I'd probably, I'd be like. So don't act like, don't act because you know me now. He's all, he's all decade. He's all decade. I mean, hello. A couple all decade running backs. Yeah, there are. Wait, Adrian what's, Peterson. What is the answer? Can I get the number, please? Let me get an exact number. Oh, this is getting crazy. Can I get second place, please? Oh, we, oh man, it's like a, the suspense is killing me. Is. I'm so excited. So <laughs> this is like trivia. This is like trivia, huh? So Frank Gore had 9,786 yards. That's my dog. That's my boy. And LaShawn McCoy led the decade with 10,000. Let's, Let's go. go. Take it easy. Take, take it easy. <laughs> when we return, we will not take it easy. LSU versus Iowa. It transcends sports. Let's, Let's have the conversation that nobody is having. This is a cultural matchup. There's a lot more at stake than just a basketball game. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Relax in your chairs. Turn your volumes up. Bring your cell phones out because you're going to tweet some of the sound bites that we talk about next. That's beat. In my mind, this is going to be the biggest women's matchup that you will see in the 2024 year. Standing here with the brilliant Joy Taylor. Now, Joy, Iowa, LSU, it's a rematch of last year's national championship game. It's already in the Elite Eight. But my question is this. This is bigger than just a sports game. Because if you go back to the history of this matchup, remember the first lady, Joe Biden, what she posted after Iowa lost last year. I know we'll have the champions come to the White House. We always do. So we hope LSU will come. But, you know, I'm going to tell you, Joe, I think Iowa should come, too. Y'all can read the rest of the quote. Joy, this is a basketball game, but so much more than that. Why has this game, this matchup, transcended basketball? It has a very bird magic feel to it. Yep. And if you remember the NBA before, Bird and Magic showed up. We probably don't remember much because <laughs> it was struggling. They were on tape delay. The, the league needed an infusion, if you will, of drama, of excitement, of players to get attached to. But there was also a very deep, obvious racial element to it. Now, we know that Magic and Bird are very good friends, mm -hmm. and they were very good friends. But on the court, you saw this. Yeah. You saw this yeah. between them. So outside of the, the racial elements that you're seeing with Iowa, and obviously you see the demographic of that team, you see the demographic of the LSU mm -hmm. team, the visuals, the reaction to Angel Reese when she was taunting, when she was talking to Caitlin Clark in the national championship last year, the reaction to her was very specific. It was very aimed. It was undeniable. And that's carried on into this year. And that's why this matchup has so much energy and so much undertone to it. But I think what's also adding to it is the unapologetic nature of not just LSU, go Tigers, but Angel Reese specifically. Mm -hmm. She shows up as herself. She shows up big. She shows up with energy. She's unapologetic. She's fine being the villain. She's leaning into the narratives that are set for her, and they are winning. So I think that all of those elements have really created what has become a dynastic matchup. Sometimes we kind of unnecessarily exaggerate things in sports. Like, oh, you're just bringing up culture. You're bringing up race unnecessarily. But I think like in this case, it is true. There was an article written. I think it was the LA Times. Correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, please. LA Times, they referenced the pending LSU versus UCLA matchup as America's sweethearts versus the dirty debutantes. This was a quote. Do you prefer America's Sweethearts or its dirty debutantes, milk and cookies or Louisiana hot sauce? Now, LSU is a lot of things, and I think those LSU women are a lot of things. But to imply dirty, Joy, to me, that just rubbed me a little bit of the wrong way. Do you think we're exaggerating the racial components, the cultural components of the matchup? Not at all. They, they pulled it, by the way. <laughs> not at all. If someone calls you dirty, do you appreciate that? Not at all. That's not... That's not a, something that you normally like to be called. Certainly not in an article. Certainly not describing how you react to things, how you play, the style of play in which you perform. When you're winning, when you're the national champions, why? Why is it milk and milk, hot sauce? Like, it's, it's very obviously there. And these types of things are real when you're talking about race, when you're talking about culture, when you're talking about how people expect you to show up. They want you to be happy 
to be there. What do I always say? You say a lot of things. I say a lot of things, but I definitely don't like humble. And that's not what LSU is. Now, Kaylin Clark isn't that either. But when she shows up that way, it's not received the same way as Angel Reese. It's not. It, it's factual. It's in the writing. It's in the reporting. It's in the reaction. It is very obviously there. But what I think is great for the sport is, again, I, I've felt like this way since last year. It feels like magic and bird. It feels like something people can get attached to. It, it creates an energy around the game and around the sport that has made everyone talk about it. And they've talked about how they have respect for each other. And it's so much more than just the, the undertones, the reaction, the buildup, the drama. It's the fact that we are talking about them talking trash. We would not be doing a segment about two men talking trash. Now, we might do a segment about a man choking another man, mm -hmm. but not about talking trash because the women's game has arrived in a way that they are allowed to be unapologetically themselves and everyone else is just adjusting to it. Magic and bird. Magic one, bird one. Magic one, bird one. That's what makes a rivalry a rivalry because somebody else also wins in that rivalry. Otherwise, nobody cares it's one-sided. Does Caitlyn need to win to enhance this rivalry that really could come to would end because Caitlin Clark is going to depart to the WNBA. I think it would do wonderful things for this conversation if Caitlin was able to win tonight. Because again, it is the Elite Eight. She'd have more work to do. But when you're talking about LSU, when you're talking about Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark hasn't beaten LSU. She needs to do that. It's not just the team. It's not just the matchup. It's not just the undertones. It's not just the dirty debutantes versus the milk and cookies. Which, by the way, why do you need to choose between milk and what, 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 what is the choice? Can we not have can we not have both? Can we have the Louisiana hot sauce and the milk and cookies <laughs> afterwards? You have to create this narrative. You have to create this division between everything rather than just enjoying two of the top teams in the country matching up in an incredible storyline, which I think will carry over into the WNBA very well, which is why I do think it's important for Caitlin Clark to win. Because part of what made Magic and Bird so special is yeah. the battles, winning, losing, matching up again time after time, watching excellence against each other in competition and the respect that they two ha they have for each other, which they're constantly talking about. Well, 10 million people watched last year. I assume that number will be eclipsed tonight. When we return, I got to get Dave Hellman, LSU alumni to weigh in, and Shady McCoy, who has been watching this women's game as thoroughly as anybody on television. It's the biggest game. I'm not talking women's college basketball. It's the biggest college basketball game you will watch all season, and it's in about an hour. Final thoughts on the other side of this commercial break. Shady McCoy, I am talking to you. Be as unfiltered as you can, reminding you, remembering you're on national television. You're passionate about this women's game tonight. You're passionate about Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Paul J. Johnson, Kim Mulkey, the rest of LSU, the, what is going on tonight. But it's more than just a basketball game. A lot of cultural components. Yeah. What do you see when you see some of the tension? Dirty debutantes, the LSU yeah, women I've have been that. called. Milk and cookies with UCLA, Iowa, Caitlin Clark. Iowa's predominantly white. LSU, predominantly black. You've been in a lot of locker rooms. Talk to me about this you game. You know, it's funny, man. Because in, in sports, right, it don't matter if it's in the 80s with Larry, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, right, to now, it, it, it's part of the game. It's just part of our country. It's what it's, it's about. I mean, it's like simple things. If, if you look at that, the track record of our sports world, right, I remember back in the day with, with the um, Penn State, it was an Orange Bowl game against uh, Miami. Mm -hmm. Remember that it's called it? The convicts. convicts. First, um, like, like, Catholics first convicts. Catholics first convicts, right? I look at the Fab Five. Five black starting uh, freshman going against the white blue devil Duke, right? They made that an issue. I look at um, Floyd Mayweather, right? He, he, people love to watch Floyd Mayweather, not because they see how great he was, him win, because he talked with that arrogance, right? And when a black man or a black or somebody black talks with that arrogance, people hate it and they make it a black versus a white thing. It happens all the time. Muhammad Ali, the, 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 the best example, right? Everybody loved Muhammad Ali, but when he was fighting, nobody wanted to see him win. He talked too much. The, the, the black man talked too much. And people hate that. So when you look at a girl like Angel Reese, who I can really relate to because I, I do like, now I don't think that she's super great as a player. We joke about it. But as far as her personality and what she brings to the game, the passion, right? Not apologizing for the way she is, the way she acts, the way she chairs, right? The way she deals with her anger. People hate that. And I think in our game, right, it, that's something that we can't get away from. And I don't know what it is, but I think for this country, we make it such a race card. So tonight, I just hope that these girls can have a good time and play. I love in the media how they, they spoke, right? Angel Reese said, hey, there's no hatred. 
we competing, right? And if, if, if it's a black girl, white girl, whoever it is, I'm going at her. I don't care about what no friends we are. We can be friends after the game. And if you watch Caitlyn, how she talks, she's the same way. That's why I love her. You could tell she plays some, some sisters growing up and some brothers because she, she embodies that whole thing of competition. And it's not a race car. So I hope tonight this, we can get past that finally for once and just play the game, right? And don't care what the media says. Don't care what the narrative they try to put on it. We're just having a basketball game, right? We're uplifting women basketball and everybody's watching. Who do you want to see win, though? Because that's great and all, but if we're being honest, we don't kumbaya about sports. We don't. Like, that's cool, but we don't yeah. kumbaya. Like, yeah. sports is sports. I'm trying to make sure I talk about this game in the same manner that I would talk about a men's game. So yeah. it's like, it's not a, I just hope we see everybody win. That's not what it's about. It's not, a, no ribbons are being handed out. Yeah. Who you want to see win the game? Well, I'm going with my paycheck. <laughs> and I'm betting on LSU. I'm going with the better team. I'm going with the more talent. I'm going with the bigger size. I'm going with the better players. I'm going with LSU. Ooh. But I do want Caitlin to ball up. She's my favorite player, her and Juju. They are special. More speak on the other half, other side of this commercial break. Thank y'all for hanging with us thus far. We got a little bit more for you when we return. I'm the greatest. Mama said that. Sad news in the NFL today. Former cornerback Bonte Davis passed away at the age of 35. A fraternity brother of mine in the NFL. But, Shady, he was your former teammate 2018 with the Buffalo Bills. Wanted to give you time to speak. Yeah, Bonte, uh, really good teammate, really good friend of mine. This is sad to, to, to wake up with this news. Um, good person, always good time, a lot of laughter. I, I, my prayers go out to him and his brother, his, his family, his grandma, his, his parents, and everybody that played with him. Um, you, heard the, you hate to hear things like this. So, um, like I said, prayers go out to his family. No doubt about it. Vontae Davis, brother of Vernon Davis. He was 35 years of age. I remind you all, check on your loved ones, tell your loved ones that you love them, and hug those close to you. That's it for us. We'll see you tomorrow.